to another episode of the You Only Live Once Life and Business Innovation Style Meditations, Yummy Conversations, where I, honey, bring you yummy conversations so that you can live yummy in your body. We are here today in Oakland, California, and bringing to you beautiful topics in this beautiful lake. And today we're going to talk about five ways to stop living in fear. And the biggest challenge when you're living in fear is that you are less confident, you are less secure, you are probably stagnant in your growth, and you aren't really having that much fun in your life, and you might not feel like your life has direction or purpose, and you're really not stepping outside of your comfort zone, so there is no thrill and aliveness in your life. So if you're feeling that you're not in your flow, or like kind of bored, or something is not just quite right, I challenge you to look into what is the fear that's stopping you from overcoming something, an obstacle, or an intense vision that you want to move forward. Fear shows up in all kinds of situations. Besides dreaming big, a lot of people feel the fear of dreaming too big and it keeps them small and it keeps them within a smaller potential than where they have evolved to be. Fear also has a really show-stopping sign in which it doesn't allow you to really feel yourself. Fear closes you down, constricts you, makes you feel small and makes you feel like you're not moving forward. So without further ado, let's start with point and secret number one. <laughs> Identify and accept that you're actually fearful of something. So that is the first thing you need to do when you realize that you're not moving forward in life and identify what is it that you're fearful of. Number two, what is it that actually you're fearful of? What is the best case scenario? What is your biggest, yummiest dream? What is something that you've always wanted to do and that scares you to the pits? And why aren't you doing it? Is it that you are afraid that you can't execute it? Is it that you are afraid that you can't do it perfectly? Is it that you are afraid that you aren't that kind of person who's able to embrace this? Or is it that you are thinking that maybe this isn't for you. So what is it that you're actually afraid of after you've accepted that fear? And identifying what happens if you did do that. So step number three is to actually identify, okay, in the scenario, let's say you want to, you've always wanted to do something, right? Like you always wanted to start a business, you've always wanted to have an amazing relationship, you've always wanted to quit this job and do some other career, um, or you've always wanted to start exercising, or you've always wanted to do something different in your life so that you can actually change your life and not go through the same mundane routine that you're used to. Not to say that that is bad, it's just not what you want right now. What is it that's stopping you and what is what would happen if you took that step forward? Let's say you would take the step forward of starting the exercise every morning and sign up for a gym. What would happen if you did that? Oh, you might not go, you might be wasting money, you might not be able to have the motivation or discipline to go. Maybe the fear is you don't have what it takes to execute a vision about you know your future probably business or your future career. What happens if you quit your job and go for another job and you don't like it, right? What are those fears that are joining up in and what are the what ifs that are stopping you from moving forward? And I invite you to explore that. So what if this happened? And what if that happened? And what if that fear were to come true? And what if you really are gonna be broke and nobody's gonna be your friend? And what if really, you know, you're going to be on the streets? What is your biggest fear? And I invite you to explore that. Because what happens is, when we look at what our fears are and we realize that, you know what, the worst, worst, worst case scenario probably is something that like, yeah, you know, if I follow my dreams, I run out of money, I ha can't make rent, I will be homeless, on the streets, starve to death, and, um, and then what's the worst that could happen after that? No one will be my friend, everyone will hate me, I will be a failure, and, um, and then what's the worst after that, you know? Death, maybe? Or not, you know? And, and there it comes a point when you discover what that fear is and you follow the train of what if the worst case scenario happens, you will hit a rock bottom. And chances are, are you gonna stay in that rock bottom? I don't know. Maybe, yeah, maybe not. 
for me, like every time I had explored the fear of, you know, executing this thing that is so threatening and so risky to my identity and so crazy that I can't even imagine myself doing, the worst that could happen is nowhere close to what, what I'm afraid of. Because the worst that could happen, go broke, be on the streets, can't make rent, and then eventually just get a job, you know, and then work your way back up. Worst case scenario, get a minimum wage job and then work back up, right? Work back up in terms of money. Let's say you go for the guy or the woman of your dreams and the worst case scenario is that it doesn't work out and you're single. And the worst case scenario is that you're single forever. And, um, but at least you knew what it was like to go for what you wanted. Worst case scenario is you lose, um, you lose a chance on going for one woman or one man and you have to live with regret and the worst case of scenario of living with regret may be uh, having trauma or never being able to fall in love again and the worst case scenario after that is like you would probably you know just start learning how to heal from that and and then it starts becoming positive again. So whenever you discover and you go along this train of thought of like, what's the worst case scenario? What's the worst case scenario? What's the worst case scenario? At one point you will hit this bottom pit and then things will start turning back to positivity. So explore that. What is the worst case scenario if you went for your biggest fears and you conquered them? So the next item on the list, step number four, I believe, is then what is it that you want instead? So, in my biggest fear, let's say, is um, going for what I really, truly want. And my worst case scenario is it doesn't work out. Then what do I really want? I want it to work out, you know? My best case scenario, which is what you should think of, is that it works out and I'm actually happy. And I am able to embrace my life and embrace my courage and embrace my value and embrace what I truly deserve in a man, in a woman, in a team environment, as a leader, a community, um, truly to go for an impactful life that you've always dreamed of, you know? And uh, the best case scenario is you do make an impact and you do influence a bit of positivity into the world. Um, and the best case scenario may be that you know, people get inspired by you and start doing their journeys and start going for their potentials and start conquering their fears because you did as well. And maybe the best case scenario is that your kids, your family, your colleagues, your friends, your loved ones get inspired by you too and start trusting themselves as well. And the best case scenario may that maybe that you gain more confidence in yourself and and in turn trust yourself more and become capable of doing even bigger things, right? And so right now, one more step is asking yourself, what is the next step that you can take to conquer this fear? For me, I'm always challenging myself to conquer fear. So my talent is not singing, even though I'm gonna try to do it today. Um, but my talent is conquering my fears. And every year I do something crazy that conquers my fear. In 2015, it was coming to the US from Asia seven times. And then in 2016 or 17, it was publishing my book. And then um, this year it's about like just traveling to eight different new countries and sharing stuff. And today it's, the first time I'm seeing this thing for you guys. Um, um, I hope that this song is something that reminds you of your higher self. So if you also can tune into your own courage um, when you're going to do something that you've never done before um, and just kind of tune into that and remember you between the relationship between you and your higher self in this song.
California gold. You found.